As the largest religious group in the world, experts estimate there are now 2.4 billion Christians worldwide. Christianity is a well-known religion today, so many people might not believe there was ever a time when it did not hold sway over a vast portion of the global population. Although historians do not know the exact date Christianity began, it started during the Roman Empire, which had a harsh stance against new religions. Under Emperor Nero, the new Christians encountered their first persecutions, violent but short. Other persecutions sprouted up for years afterward, often fueled by the Romans' confusion about the new religion. They did not understand their beliefs and were horrified by communion, where believers eat bread and wine as the body and blood of Jesus Christ. With all of this confusion and persecution, it's incredible Christianity survived. Thankfully, the early believers were up to the challenge, spreading this new religion that has long outlived the Roman Empire. How did Christianity start? Christians believe Christianity began with Jesus Christ, born in Bethlehem during King Herod's reign. As an adult, he traveled around Israel, telling people about the kingdom of heaven in a time filled with political tension and threats of revolution. His message did more than give people hope after death. It also led people to think he wanted to overthrow Roman rule. According to the biblical text, his ministry was filled with miracles and teachings about living righteously, even if he broke some Jewish traditions along the way. Jesus Christ also said he was the Son of God, which angered the religious leaders. They thought he was committing blasphemy, so they gave him to the Romans for execution. Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of the region, finally agreed to sentence Jesus Christ to crucifixion to appease the crowds, even though he did not want to. Crucifixion was a Roman form of execution and was so brutal it was usually reserved for non-Roman citizens only. The victim was scourged and then forced to carry the crossbeam to the execution site. Then, his wrists and ankles were nailed to the cross, and the soldiers stood the whole structure upright, placing one's entire weight on those nails. Crucifixion was one of the most painful ways to execute someone, yet despite the shame and agony, the person usually died from suffocation. Most historians agree Jesus was crucified, but Christians believe he came back to life three days after his death. Even his first disciples had trouble believing this. They struggled with doubts until Jesus appeared and showed he still had a physical body. Then he charged them to spread the good news, or the gospel. The kingdom of God was here. According to the biblical text, Jesus rose into the sky, leaving his apostles to tell the world, which they began doing almost immediately. The apostles did not give lecture tours or create stirring advertising. Instead, they spread the news about Jesus Christ by word of mouth. These people were enthusiastic and defiant in the face of early adversity, mainly from the Jewish religious leaders, suggesting they truly believed their message without regard to how fantastical it may have sounded to outsiders. Many people were attracted to their sincerity and adopted Christianity, even though it was not a separate religion yet. Christianity came from Judaism, so the early believers were all Jewish and probably believed they had not converted to a new faith. For a while, even the world around them viewed Christianity as a new Jewish sect, so the Roman Empire did not intervene. However, that all changed as Christians began telling non-Jewish people about Jesus. Non-Jewish people were called Gentiles and the Jewish people typically did not interact with them. Allowing the Gentiles to join the Christian faith was one of its first controversies, but the apostles and early Christians eventually decided all were welcome, not just Jews. Unlike other religions at the time, the early Christians decided they did not need to wear certain clothes or follow particular religious customs. Instead, their faith would be about intrinsic qualities like love, charity, and good works. It's what finally separated Christianity from Judaism, revealing itself as a new religion and earning the Roman Empire's persecution. What were the external pressures on Christianity? Early Christians often turned to apologists when confronted with confusion or scorn from others. In this case, apologists defend their beliefs using logic and reasoning. The Romans were concerned about Christians getting together to practice cannibalism and love for all. Some began to spread rumors and falsities. The apologists attempted to dispel confusion and disprove lies, and some, like Athenagoras, argued Christians were more ethical than the average pagan. However, the apologists could not quell all uneasiness, nor could they protect their fellow believers from the Roman government. 
Some apologists, like Justin Martyr, were even killed for their efforts. The first wave of persecution began under Emperor Nero in 64 CE, when Rome burned. After the fires, people were outraged, and Nero accused the Christians of starting the destruction. Most historians believe Nero was lying. He needed someone to blame, so he took it out on a religious minority that already made the Romans uneasy. Some historians think Nero may have set the fires himself because he wanted to rebuild that part of the city. Of course, a few historians believe Nero might have been telling the truth. A small group of radicalized Christians could have started the blaze in their fervor for the end times to begin. Most historians dismiss the idea because Nero was selfish and unjust, so it's more likely he picked a group that was too small to defend itself against persecution. Under the first persecution, Christians were beaten, crucified, thrown to the dogs, and burned alive as living torches. These few years drastically affected the early Christians, although the early believers did not recant their beliefs. Thankfully, this first wave of persecution ended with Nero's death, although it would not be the last. Christian persecutions fluctuated depending on the emperor, and even when the emperors were against them, persecution was not consistently enforced to the same degree across the empire. For a while, it tended to be localized events. One of the most famous was the martyrdom of Polycarp, an older man living in the 2nd century in Smyrna, located in modern Turkey. A few local leaders insisted he burn incense to the emperor. For Polycarp, it was like saying the emperor was more powerful than God, which he could not do and hold on to his Christian faith at the same time. Although the magistrates tried to convince him to burn the incense, Polycarp held to his faith and was burned at the stake. Another famous Christian martyr was a young woman named Perpetua. She was 22 when she died and kept a journal of her final days. Like with Polycarp, the magistrates pleaded with her to offer the sacrifice to acknowledge the emperor's authority, but she refused all pleas, even those from her father. She was decapitated in 203 CE. The stories say the gladiator missed her throat on the first try, so Perpetua guided his hands. Both of these famous martyrs were victims of localized persecution. Empire-wide persecution would not pick up again until about 250 CE, when Emperor Decius decided he wanted proof that all citizens were loyal to him. He ordered everyone, except the Jewish people, to offer a sacrifice before the magistrate, who would sign a certificate and send it to Rome. He did not intend to start widespread persecution, but the Christians refused to offer sacrifices to anyone except God. Persecutions continued under Emperor Diocletian in 303 CE. Unlike Emperor Decius, Diocletian purposefully attacked the Christians. It was another tough time for the Christians, and after almost 300 years of hardship, it's impressive the early Christians were still around and willing to stand up for their faith. These external pressures shaped early Christianity, but it was not the only trouble they had to struggle with. What were the internal pressures on Christianity? The early Christians were under a lot of pressure from the Roman Empire to redact their faith. If that wasn't enough, they were also dealing with conflict within Christianity, mostly centering around philosophy. When Jesus left his disciples to spread the gospel, he did not leave them a fully detailed explanation of every issue of doctrine, so the early Christians had to figure it out. One of the earliest divisions came over Gnosticism. In the end, Gnostic Christians were condemned as heretics, but they were struggling to differentiate Christianity from the world around them. Gnostic Christians believed the God in the Old Testament was evil and a false god. Jesus came to show everyone who the true God was, and there was secret knowledge for understanding the world, if you devoted yourself to finding it. Because they believed the Old Testament God was not truly God, they named him Demiurge. Demiurge created the universe without God's permission and trapped divinity into physical bodies. Gnostics believed all material things were evil because of this. They aimed to eliminate their physical bodies and return to the non-physical realm with only their souls. Some of their ideas came from Greek philosophy. Early Christianity was surrounded by it, so it makes sense that they incidentally picked up a few Greek teachings. One idea that still influences Christian thought today comes from the Platonists, who argued from a non-physical place of consciousness. This idea wound itself into Christian teaching as a non-physical heaven. Even today, most people picture floating on clouds and light when they try to imagine heaven, even though this is not found in biblical texts. 
Naturally, the Gnostic ideas about the inherent evilness of the physical realm caused division amongst the early Christians. The Gnostics denied a bodily resurrection, which mainstream Christians hold as one of its central tenets. Although the two groups disagreed on various doctrinal issues, denying the physical resurrection finally turned mainstream Christianity entirely against them. The Gnostics were eventually labeled heretics. The internal and external pressures on early Christianity came to a head under Emperor Constantine. Diocletian split the Roman Empire in half during his reign to facilitate management, and Constantine became a Caesar in the Western Roman Empire in 306. However, as various political leaders fought for power, Constantine had his own aspirations, and by 312 CE, he was one of the two remaining challengers for control of the western half of the empire. The other was Maxentius. The two men fought the Battle of the Milvan Bridge in October of 312. Constantine won and changed the course of world history. But the most intriguing part of the battle happened the night before. According to Constantine, he dreamed of seeing a cross in the sky and the words, under this sign, you will conquer. So when he awoke, he painted Christian crosses on his shields and won the battle. Historians are unsure if Constantine had a vision. Still, he worked with the Eastern Emperor, Valerius Licinianus Licinius, to write the Edict of Milan. This declaration made Christianity a recognized religion of the Roman Empire and forbade persecution. In 324, Constantine overthrew Licinius and became the sole ruler of the Roman Empire. The external pressures from persecution were over. To remove the internal pressures, Constantine called the Council of Nicaea. It was a meeting of about 300 bishops across the empire to establish mainstream Christian doctrine and handle heresies. The goal was to unite the faith into a universal church. These leaders finally settled on the principle of the Trinity, which says God is one being and composed of three people, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Christianity affirmed its monotheism, and the Council of Nicaea wrote the Nicene Creed in 325, which states the basic universal tenets of the Christian faith. From here, Christianity continued to develop and grow, stretching out to touch almost every corner of the globe. The early Christians were vital and critical thinkers, and their deep faith allowed them to survive the Roman Empire and continue to thrive today. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history? Impress your friends? and predict the future more accurately based on past events. If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about Christianity, check out our book, Early Christianity, a captivating guide to early Christian history, starting with the ministry of Jesus through the Apostolic Age to the First Council of Nicaea. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.